It is still July 18th, 2024. When I did those two videos, there was some guy was talking to some lady. Okay. He said, I can't believe that old idiot confessed he paid for all those people to be here. And he was complaining. You do realize where I told you about that, where that other lady was using my insurance. My dad gave Dave a job in 1986 and between 86 and 2003, she ran up all kinds of bills. We went to the factory and disputed them. And um, Kay McMillan was the secretary. And the union committee had meetings. My brother Pete was on the union committee. They told them there's no way they would get the company's information unless Dave gave it to them. And Dave was trying to tell me that some other lady stole my insurance information. Well, how would you get it? He said, Karen, she's some kind of scam artist. She got your information. She ran up all kinds of bills. My insurance paid for 75, 80% of everything. That's where, where they made me so sick and were ripping me off. Because it paid for almost everything. We still got $200 bills. Uh, $1,000 bills. Two or $3,000 bills. Where she would stay in the hospital, get treatments done, see doctors. We get all kinds of bills. Dave's wages were attached. We had to pay the co-pays. And we were disputing them. And back then you didn't have to show ID. You just had to call it in later. People used other people's insurances all the time back then. Okay. And she, I, I told you, in like 2001, some hospital called me and said, I want to talk about your stay in the hospital. I haven't stayed in the hospital in years. Well, you see, Dr. So-and-so, never heard of him. Well, we sat and talked. You have two little girls. I said, ma'am, I have three stinky boys. She said, their names are that. I said, those are nice names, but I have a John, Josh, and Dan. Some lady has been using my insurance for 15 years, running up all kinds of bills. It's not mine. Your insurance information is this. Yes, but it's not me. Well, we'll put it this way. You still owe the copay. You can't prove it wasn't you. I think I just did. We got all kinds of bills. Dave's like, she's some kind of scam artist, Karen. She's got your information and she's just using, going here and carry on our insurance. Kay McMillan told Dave, you either pay those copays. We're not getting stuck with them. We're not absorbing them. I will have you arrested for insurance fraud. Okay. What's not funny in May or June of 19, two heavy set blonde girls showed up. They said they were Dave's daughters. They grew up with a single mom and had nothing because Dave wouldn't leave me. They said they were them. October 4th, 23, before noon, I'm in Maslin. They pull up next to me. Will said he was stealing the money for us. He promised it to us. Screamed it, mass. October 6, 23, Walmart 62. About 9 o'clock in the morning. Women come in. The, we talked to the officers that watch her. They said it's, they act like that, that Will was dating one of those girls. That's how not funny it is. And that he's been stealing all my money for her. February 2nd, 22, Wendy's Alliance, one of the guys that watched me come in. 
talking to the guy. Is that the one that Church tried to have killed? Yes. I heard she didn't get any money out of this. He said, no, it's the one guy from the case been stealing every dime since the first day. Okay. I was up in Akron. When the guys were outside, we're telling people it's that idiot stealing our money. Last year. Can't. On a Tuesday. After that, in October. November. Will got caught stealing. Other ones drove by that idiot stole their money. Those girls are breaking he's stealing by them. Dave's illegitimate daughters. Where Dave said she's just a scam artist. Was probably one of Dave's girlfriends. Because how else would she? Where I just let it go that it was a scam artist ripping us off. How would she get the information if Dave didn't give it to her? Kay was right. Those people have defrauded me out of all kinds of money. And now they think that they're going to come in and take my informant money? Because Dave cheated on me with her mother? I owe them nothing in life. They can be arrested. And their mother for the insurance fraud. She ran up all kinds of bills. Large co-pays. We got stuck with all kinds of bills from her. My mom knew about her. My brother Pete knows about her. He was on the union committee. And they were threatening insurance fraud for Dave. That's where one of the Canton investigators last October we found out... Uh, that idiot was letting uh, some other woman use her insurance. That's where August of 23, Officer Mark was telling a lady, none of this is funny. Said, did her ex-husband defend her? Yes. We taped him. So did I. He, he said, um, did anybody ever talk to her? He said, no. Then they had to frame her. It's been documented and verified she was framed before. Was it the drug cartel? Yes. We've seen him. So who did Dave hire? Pete on his own. Who's Pete? The drug cartel. It's also been documented and verified another woman was using her insurance before, and it was a medication error made her sick before. None of this is funny. I know it's not. They almost killed me. You do realize where that agent on a recorded line admitted he told on me to the church people, talked to the Vegas, admits four times that he told on me, was seen by the Norton Barberton police telling on me the Apostolic Church of Barberton. Okay? Before he even spoke to me after the hotline. Mitts on, people have told me, we listened to the hotline, came up out of my chair. That agent talks to me like a dog. Where I called the hotline, okay? Next morning, they drugged me up so bad, I can't wake up all the way. I have rivers of tears running on my face. I'm wiping, I kept saying I can't. Let it go to voicemail. The next day, the phone's ringing. Let it go to voicemail. Wake up later, staggering, holding on to the walls to get to the bathroom. Holding on the walls to get to the refrigerator, get something to drink, get back in bed. Listen to voicemail. This is agent da da da. Call me back. I rolled over. I can't. Rivers of tears running down my face. Second day, I'm not much better. Third day, I'm sitting on the front porch holding my head. What's wrong with me? I feel drunk and I don't drink. So I googled that symptom. It's a date rape drug wearing off. Amnesia drugs. They make you sick. I got enough air in my face. I called one of my witnesses that I gave the hotline. Of course, Karen. I'll witness for you. It's getting darker and scarier the way she talks about it. 
So I go out and I get a card and I put that agent's number in it. And where he left it in a voicemail. Make an excuse to go down the mall. Her manager put it in her locker. Go up to Apostolic Church of Barberton. Paul Pamer got in Dave's face. My God! I had an FBI agent in my office. He's right there. I walk off real quick. He's still screaming at him. How dare you bring the FBI up here with threats on her life. I walk off. Women walk up behind me. He knows she's being drugged, beaten, raped. And he said he didn't care. I have bruises all over me. I had lost 18 pounds. I have been throwing up, almost passing out. And I thought it was a dirty well water killing me, washing in it. My heart is sinking down in my stomach. This is how it's going on. I go in and I sit down. They come in. He knows she's being drug beat and raped and he said he didn't care. If she was gonna be faking she was sick and faking she got well while that family was grieving he didn't care what happened to her. And if she was going to be mean to their women, he was going to turn her back over to them. Can you imagine an agent saying that? Dave comes in, let's go. Get out in the car. He's like, how dare you call the FBI on me? I had to kill you myself. And he peels out of the parking lot, punching me in the truck. He goes for a load of gun between the council, and I put my hand on it. He knocks it off, and he starts to punch me. I almost jumped off the car out on the highway. I ran from him when I got home. I call him the next day, rivers of tears, scared out of my mind. Everybody knows I called for help. I tell him somebody told on me, you liar. I tell him that the guy threatened to knife me at Giant Eagle. He calls me a liar. He's a serial killer. I tell him that uh, he had tried to kidnap me before. And before I can tell him, Terry Coberly seen him. He said, oh, come on now. He said, even if a church person seen him, they would never verify it. Well, she did. He said, I've met with that family in my office that lost their kid in their traffic accident. I had nothing to do with in 03. And it's 18. They're just making up shit to kill people. And all those church people. And I know they're trying to kill you because you were faking you were sick. And faking you got well while that family was grieving. It's like, look, I really was sick. Dear God, I almost died. It's like, I really was sick. He's like, you liar. Was there a camera above that bench when you heard that man's voice? I don't know. You say you're lying or I'll put you in jail. I'm like... I don't know if there was a camera above the bench. You either say it or I'll arrest you. And he starts screaming, I say it or I'll put you in jail. It's like, fine, whatever. Ha, 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 ha. Now I want you to say you were fake and you were sick. I said I really was sick. You liar. I met with that family in my office. And I met with all those church people. And I know they're trying to kill you because you were faking you were sick. And faking you got well while that family was grieving. You need to realize what you've done. Stranger lied. It's like I really was sick before. I don't blame him for trying to kill you. You actually listen to the recorded line. He actually says that. People like people say you listen to the recorder line, you come up out of your chair. He's like, and I don't blame him for trying to kill you. Now you either sit or leave you there. But they've tried to kill me. So? They've tried to kill me. So? You sit or leave you there. And I start pleading for my life. Sit or I'll leave you there. It's like, fine, just don't let him kill me. Ha 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 ha. Why would the FBI help a person like you? Because they're going to try to kill me. So, they've tried to kill me. So, the other agent yells out the rapist's name. Where Dave said he hired Pete on his own. The drug dealer. We could always use Pete's tape of weird with yourself. The shower scene in the other room. Where they made fun of FBI agent John for calling for it. June 7, 23, publicly mocked him how big a fool he is.
It's a photoshopping of a shower scene. March 1st to 3rd of 21, 8 to 10 at, 6 to 10 at night, they um, admitted, they put clips together, made it a form. May 12, 22, and May 26, 22, the shower scene done on purpose to make you look weird, finding tapes of them admitting a shower scene in the other room. The shower scene of washing. Okay? He's laughing at me for my rapist. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Then he said something else about Pete again. I've never met him. I told you. I would wake up with throwing up, heart racing, almost passing out, giant orange lemon, grapefruit sized bruises, severe personal infection till I couldn't hardly pee, migraine headache, almost passing out, or I'd come in, be fine, take a wash my hands, make something to eat and drink, uh, go in and use the bathroom. And it was a Diet Coke of all things. And I come out, take a drink in the room, and go dizzy and black. And then it happened again. And I thought the dirty well water showering in it was killing me. I hadn't seen or talked to anybody. And they're making fun of me for the rapist. A drug dealer. Running a scam. Okay. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. The only Pete I know is my brother in Medina. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, I bet you're going to say you don't know anything about this doctor, da, da Well, I thought it was that lady that used my insurance. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Found out it's just some guy impersonating a doctor. None of my doctors could ever talk to him. They sure as hell couldn't talk to a drug dealer. They couldn't talk to anybody for HIPAA. December 30th, 31st of 23. Altman Hospital nurses, my God, nobody's allowed to talk to these people. They had some guy impersonated a doctor from Altman Hospital selling the information. The hospital gets sued. And no one's going to back those doctors from before. My God, they were lying so bad. They said she had brain tumors. There was nothing wrong with her, but her muscles locked up. And they were just ripping her off, making her sick. And it was a medication making her sick. Nobody's going to ever back medication errors and people making people sick, ripping them off. Cops walked by, all those doctors were lying. He said, yes, it was a medicine making her sick. No, this is funny. I was months from death when that other doctor told on him. It's documented medical malpractice and documented medication errors. Okay, and I don't even know who this guy is. And here it's just some guy impersonating a doctor. HIPAA violations, no doctor could have talked to them. I said, what are you talking about? Stop. She don't know. Well, of course not. It was a scam. Okay. Give me a real reason why the FBI should help be a person like you. Well, my brother-in-law, Craig, died working for the government under Dick Cheney. I describe him. He said, first of all, have you talked to any law enforcement about threats on your life? I said, um, the only two officers I've ever talked to were August 8th of 18. I had a light in the security system. I either call them silly or stupid. They told me it looked like an alien orb or an angry spirit. He starts, the agent starts chuckling. You're kidding, right? And I said, no, I thought they were dehydrated. So I offered him water. And he's like, you're kidding. I said, no, because who talks like that? And then they told me to buy a big dog and let a dog handle it. Somebody come on my property yet. They don't want bothered. He offers to take me somewhere and leave me with no money. I have no money to start. Then he said, if you agree to get information on Dave and the churches, I can open an informant program. Well, they're already begging to three people in the mall. It had been four attempts on my life with them. The case, and it comes with 5000 a month. I thought, well, I'll be set for life. I can get him. I can hold out a couple more weeks and it'll be over. They'll get him and nobody else will get hurt. I can do that. For you, he said, okay, I'm opening an account with 5000 a month. You'll have a life of peace as an informant. Nothing legally stated, dated against you again for work in this case. Okay. 
we'll always put it back as if it never happened and only for you and only for you would we do this for and you can't be legally charged for anything again for work in this case admit to no wrongdoing and i'll take care of everything in the end and you'll have that money to live on okay then he's like but if you try to tell someone i'll list you crazy and no one will help you 14th amendment I talked to a prosecutor's office. He cried like a laugh until he was crying. Only thing legal that agent did on that whole phone call was list you informant with money immunity. You get paid for working the case and only for working the case. He's only a higher officer. He cannot put ask you to stay quiet. The police know they can't go along with him bullying you into false statements, and they can't. And he doesn't have the authority to ask you to stay quiet. I said, but he already confessed. He told on me. He said, it don't matter. You tell whoever you want. And he can't open his mouth to you. I talked to a criminal attorney and police out this area. Same thing. It's a First Amendment. It takes a judge to take and put a gag order on you. And by constitutional rights, it can only be in a jury trial. You can tell whoever you want. And they can't say a word. It was only bullying you. Get the money for working the case and only for working the case. And he said in the way that agent set it up, you can't get out of being an informant until they actually put you in another witness protection program. And it would be illegal for the FBI to drop you for any reason. They try to kill you, Karen. And they can try again. Criminal attorney, same thing. Police all this area, same thing. And no sitting judge would write, sign his own arrest warrant of taking someone's freedom of speech away outside a jury trial. They would get arrested. The only thing you can put in that case is your money and your immunity and protection. I found out they can add living and housing expenses and medical card. That's it. You get the money for working the case. He stole all my money and fed me to the cartel. People listen to the recorder line. Like I've had a guy say he came up out of his chair. A lady said I, that she came up out of her chair. And two other ladies were up here a couple weeks ago. How dare these people ever make fun of her? We listened to that recorder line. That agent admits to telling on her. And he talked to her like that. And then people are laughing at her for getting hurt. What? They better stop. It's sick. It's demonic. What is wrong with society that a drug dealer is running a drug scam on a victim? And it's documented he's a drug dealer. Photoshopping, washing, selling that victim on porn sites, selling little kids using the potty, going on kitty porn sites. They've already bragged they did all that. I've had all kinds of people admit they see my grandkids going potty. Photoshop a shower scene and a sextortion act drug me up with roofies and amnesia drugs so I wouldn't know what happened and I'm thinking it's a dirty well water I'm washing in that is killing me and they got fake sodium pentothal reports it was outlawed in the country in 2011 it was 2018 you couldn't even get it like the cops said it wasn't even funny they said that you can't even get it and you lie under it and it's an anesthetic a spy fic movie stuff that you actually admit to anything you lie under it, but it shuts down your airways and it's lethal. It's like they said, they anthrax me to make me lie. How would you like to find out where you moved in a retirement home that some serial rapist was preying on you? Selling you on porn sites. He had been the one lacing your drinks, stabbing you with needles, beating, raping you. And wasn't the dirty well water you were washing in. And people make fun of me for being a rape victim? That some drug dealer's running a big scam on? They've been telling people some drug dealer did this to her. It was a drug cartel, the human traffickers running a scam. I'm gonna upload this.